Hi and welcome back to Buddhism 101. Today we will be talking about the next aspect of the Buddhist teaching and that is the consequences of our actions. So we've talked about charity, we've talked about morality. Um, it, the next step is to uh, look at how, uh, sort of the why we should cultivate these good deeds, why we should abstain from unwholesome deeds. This is because our actions have consequences, not only uh, in the immediate sense, but over the long term as well. And Buddhist theory goes that our uh, our journey in this universe uh, continues, meaning we have these experiences in this life, and no one disputes that. But uh, from a Buddhist point of view, the experiences are the foundation of reality. So the reality around us, the, the, the time and space and so on, is actually all conceptual. You know, if you think of time, time is something that, that you think of. You, know, you think of the past, you think of the future. When, when you think of space, you look at the room, this, this comes up in the mind. The mind is aware of this space. But the basis of all of that is experience. You're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, thinking. And so uh, those experiences that we have uh, continue moment after moment after moment and continue even after the breakup of the physical body. So if, if we look at another person and we see that their body has uh, ceased to live, it's, it's very hard to believe that there's anything going on there, that, that that mind is continuing, because you can see all activity has, has ceased. Now this is if you look at things from an external point of view. But if you look at them from the point of view of your own experience, you can see your experience is creating new um, results. So if you're charitable and kind, this creates positive results. If you're moral and ethical, this helps you avoid negative results. If you're on, on, on the other hand, uh, greedy, stingy, uh, cruel, and, and immoral, then likewise, this will bring other results. It changes and it, it, it creates uh, a new aspect of your existence. Every moment we're creating and we're cultivating habits that not only change the world around us and change our environment, but also turn us and, and, and put us on a, on a, a new uh, pathway. You know? So because of the habits, they, they change our whole perception and our whole state of being. So uh, this is the reason, this is the, the uh, significance of our emphasis on wholesome deeds and, and the avoidance of unwholesome deeds, so practicing charity and, and, and cultivating morality. So how it works is when you die, um, your whole life, they say, flashes before your eyes, right? Well, th what this is is the the things in your mind that are most clear to you, you know, the things in your mind that, that, are, that you hold on most strongly because the rest of the things become insignificant. The rest of your experiences, your day-to-day -day life goes out the window. You know, you're not thinking about your shopping, you're not thinking about your laundry. When you're dying, all of these things become insignificant and so they, they fade away. What's left is all the really important stuff and that's why it flashes out. You start to think of all the things you've done to hurt others or the good things you've done to help others. 
all the bad things people have done to you or the good things people have done for you. All of the important and, and emotional, emotionally charged aspects of your life come up. And we, the, at that moment, the, 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 uh, the inclination is to cling to something. You know? Absolutely, these are the things that we cling to, so something is going to grab your attention and you start to um, react to it. And we do this in our life anyway. When we have a thought, we'll react to it and we'll say, oh yeah, I should do that. And right away we start up a new ambition, a new train, and, and, and start on a new journey. The moment of death, you see, all of the physical aspects of our being are, are shutting down. So they have, um, they also uh, leave the, move out of the picture. See, so, so memories of this life and, and, and the, the brain, you know, stops working, all of the thoughts that would come from the brain. And all that's left is this. You know, so in our life, well, we create new ambitions with, based on our desires and so on. That's part of it. But not, much of it is just our brain regurgitating uh, memories and, and sensory perceptions. All, well, all of that is gone. All that we're left with is the mind. So the, the deeds that we have done uh, become very powerful and the clinging that goes on becomes the, the, the catalyst. It's the only thing left. And so this is why when, you're, when you start out, I mean, if you believe or if you f follow Buddhist uh, logic, reason and thought, the, you start off with something very simple. You know, as a human being, you'll start off with a, a simple egg and a sperm, very small, uh, because that's all that you've got. It's just the, the, the seed that you want to be a human again, or the idea of being a human, or the desire for human life. Now, if you don't have that, well, there's different things that happen. For example, if you're full of anger, uh, then when you die and you grasp onto an angry, you know, unpleasant, displeased thought, yeah, then you don't, you're not born as a human. You know, you're born in a state of anger, a state of, of pain, a state of suffering. What we, we would call the equivalent of the uh, Judeo-Christian hell. Now, it's, it's not permanent. I mean, these are states that, that uh, come about based on your... your bent, you know, your intentions, your mind state when you die. So they are not, they, they last based on that, the power of that desire, just as any um, mind state, any state that comes from the mind. You know, it has a power and it arises and it prevails and eventually it ceases. Now it can last a long, long time, depending on how powerful is the evil intention, the angry, unwholesome, unpleasant, uh, undispleased intention, you know. but then it's over. But this is what what happens. Anger, anger, the, the 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 result of anger is to go to one of the many hells. So any, it, you create a state. You you enter into a state of pain and suffering. So a person who's killed a lot of pe of other beings or is cruel and unpleasant. You know, harsh speech, that kind of thing. If your mind is full of greed, on the other hand, greed is uh, what we normally associate with ghosts. And that's In Buddhism, that's where it leads you. If you have a mind full of greed, desire, attachment, clinging to something. So if you hear these ghost stories about ghosts that are said to haunt places that uh, have meaning for them, you know, yeah, maybe they appear in, 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 in some clothes that are associated with something they cling to and that kind of thing. This is the um, general nature of a ghost, is that they are, they are hungry, they want something, they are attached to something, they can't let go. So if, you're, if you live your life full of greed and when you die that's the overwhelming emotion and that's what you cling to is some greedy, lustful, desirous thought, being born as a ghost is, is the likely destination. If you have delusion in your mind, delusion being kind of confusion and 
arrogance, maybe conceit, um, wrong view, or if you're a person who takes a lot of mind-numbing drugs so that you just have a confused state of mind, or if you are keen on stupidity and, and ignorance and that kind of thing, if that interests you and that's your bent. And when you die, if you die in a confused mind, or if you die in a deluded mind, you're born as an animal. And this is the state of animals. They're always sort of cloudy in the mind, confused, and they can be very arrogant and conceited. But they don't have much wisdom or understanding. They're not able to comprehend deep uh, concepts like uh, meditation or spirituality, that kind of thing. Not really easy for them because their minds are clouded. And that's what happens, that's where you go in that case. Now, an ordinary person who has ordinary thoughts will be born as a, as a human being. That's sort of in the middle of somewhere. You know, if you're not too evil of a person, but not too good of a person, you'll probably be born as a human again and have to go through all the same sorts of things, give or take, depending on your karma. There's very many variables. So if you... Uh, you, you might be a sick person, you might be a healthy person, you might be a, a strong person, you might be an intelligent person, you know, all these very different variables. You may be rich, you may be poor, this kind of thing. But you'll be born a human. Now to be born in heaven, Buddhism has this concept of heaven, but it's just very much like being a human, except nicer, more comfortable. So there are states, there are many, many different states, and it's all um, a, a grade. So it's uh, degrees of, of happiness and suffering. If you're a very good person, a person who is by nature kind and caring and helpful and engages in wholesomeness and, and, and uh, refrains from unwholesomeness, abstains from unwholesomeness, then you can be pretty sure, you can be proud of yourself, happy about it. You can be confident in yourself, reassured that you're going to a good place. People who are by nature good, who has their default, constantly thinking of ways to do good deeds and careful to avoid unwholesomeness like killing and stealing and all the things that I talked about with, in regards to morality. Uh, and they, go, they quite easily go to heaven. So these are some of the, the results of mundane good deeds. Um, now, important out of all of this, and, and what we'll talk about next time, is not so much the idea of going to heaven and avoiding going to hell, but really an understanding of how the system works, because it's an important framework on which to base our meditation practice. If we base our meditation practice on external uh, you know, reality, then we start to think of our, our mental illnesses, our mental problems as being a part of nature or a part of biology. And so uh, not, not uh, subject to our ability to, to change. You know? So we, we lose this sense of self-responsibility. And uh, that's important. It's important to understand that that's not really how it works. That death isn't the end. Uh, that we really have a reason to cultivate good and evil beyond just the simple, well, it's you know, what good people do, or it's to live a good life in this life. Because in the end, if, if, if death was it, then it would all be pointless. There would be no need to strive or worry or concern yourself about goodness or evil at all. And so that's how many of us live our lives, and as a result we have a lot of problems in this world because people are all live for the moment, you only live once, these kind of things, and as a result, regardless of what happens to them, we can see the degradation that it causes in, in the world that we live in. And that should be a sign for us, uh, that we have, there's perhaps more to the world than we think, more to the universe than we think. And so this is an important for you to examine. Now, you don't have to believe it right off, but I would encourage you to consider that this might be the case, because it's an important part of, of why we want to, you know, of cultivating the desire to develop meditation practice, which we'll be talking about in upcoming uh, 
uh, segments of Buddhism 101. But for now, this is um, just an outline of what happens to us in the future, where we go as a result of our deeds, what are the consequences of good and evil. So thank you for tuning in, wishing you all the best.